Okay, our next lesson is how to do this floral um, crochet embellishment. It's from the Ephemera Cardigan, which is a free pattern on Baruchra.com. This is basically one long strip of sock yarn. I basically took a, a sock yarn, a self-striping sock yarn that I liked the color of. This is Happy by Wendy. And um, I made a strip. Um, the strip I used for the fronts of these cardigans was actually five feet long. And what you do is you just chain um, about a five foot long strip and then work one row of single crochet. We have tutorial videos on our website on how to do those, both of those things. And um, afterwards I worked a scalloped edge Again, we have videos on our website, how to do this, and I made just a really long chain of it, and then I'll show you how to attach it so it looks like this. So um, I liked the idea of using a really long strip to do the, all of the flowers, and that required me having to sort of be a little bit um, adventurous about how I place these flowers. So you can start either by sewing it down, just thread the end of the leave a long tail for yourself, or you can use the matching yarn from the sweater or you can use some sewing thread, um, but whatever you use, uh, thread it on a tapestry needle and start either at the beginning or in the middle of the flower and just start whip stitching right here. You just pick this up and then attach it to the sweater. Be careful you don't sew through both layers. Sometimes I put a magazine in between the two, the front and the back if my sweater's already assembled, so I don't sew the two layers together. It happens all the time. It happens to the best of us. So um, just start whip stitching the lower kind of chain foundation row and you're going to have to start curling pretty soon. So after you get it kind of attached, start curling around and just continue this way. Um, you can curl it around this way and form the flower like that. And then you get to the end. You can either work these individually and just tack that down, be done with it, start another chain, you know, make a four inch piece or whatever, and make another flower of a different size or whatever you want to do. I liked the challenge of kind of meandering over this way and starting a new flower. I can start the flowers sometimes. I, I like to start them by sewing them in a wide circle like this and then coiling inwards, sewing it down the whole time, sew down the base of it. Um, you can get different effects if you want it to be a flat flower, you sew it kind of with more space in between these these rounds, or if you want it to be a really three-dimensional flower, you can sew it really closely together and wind it really tightly. So just play around with whatever you like. Self-striping sock yarns are fun because you can kind of get these separate flower effects. When the yarn changes color, you have a copper-colored flower, and then all of a sudden you have a gray one. So that's really fun. Next we'll add the bead center. Okay, to start our bead accent, uh, first you want to sew um, or thread a sewing needle with some regular sewing thread. I have hot pink here, but obviously you want to match your beads or your sweater yarn when you're doing it for real. Um, it can be hard to get a knot on sewing thread to stick into knitted fabric, so what I like to do is make a knot at the end here, and then you have your two strands, and pass the sewing needle through the two strands, like this, and then tighten. Actually, yeah, you have to go into the fabric to make a stitch and tighten it and that will hold it to the fabric securely. So this is really easy. Again, it's not very organized. You just do it willy-nilly. Thread a bead onto the fabric, or onto the, the thread rather, and then just take a little stitch. And there's one bead attached. And then thread another bead. And make another stitch and I'm just going really haphazardly in different directions and I'm trying to be too careful not to make really big stitches that when I pull and tighten the thread will pucker the fabric. I think honestly the better the more disorganized it looks in this case the better because it's supposed to look like something from the natural world and it isn't always orderly so keep throwing <laughs> keep threading sorry Freudian slip and just make your little stitches. This pink and green is kind of preppy, huh? And just fill in the whole area of the, the base of the flower until it looks like pollen. A little extra bling for your sweater. It's just, see, I've, ar I've already finished basically what would be in the middle of a flower. You can go really crazy and, and go, go wild, but that only took a minute and now your sweater is, is heirloom worthy. So, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Bye!